The subject of this matter is a lady by the name of Mrs. Sage Steele. Sage Steele recently departed from ESPN. Um, she filed a suit. She felt that her First Amendment rights were violated because she should have freedom of speech and the freedom to speak her mind. Uh, she was interviewed by a person that I consider to be outstanding at her job, who also has an outstanding podcast, Mrs. Megan Kelly. I used to like her a lot when she was working on Fox News. I had the pleasure of working with her one particular day. She's a pro, and she did a hell of a job interviewing Sage Steele just the other day. And there's so many people that have been clamoring for me to talk about it, especially when they saw what Sage Steele said, because she said it about my present daytime employer, which is ESPN. I really shouldn't say daytime. It's all the time because I work for them in the morning doing first take. I work for them in the evening time doing NBA countdown. I work for them whenever they call me on, on SportsCenter. I work for them when they want me to do boxing or UFC. I mean, I mean, damn. I mean, you know, I'm synonymous with the worldwide leader, and I'm proud of it, by the way. But... Uh, she said when she departed, she was wanted to exercise her First Amendment rights more freely. Her lawsuit accused the ESPN of selective enforcement of their rules that bars news employees from commenting on politics and social issues. And a quote, she said, if we are allowing my peers to go on social media, much less on our own airwaves, saying things that have nothing to do with sports that are political, then I should be allowed on my personal time to give my opinion on my experiences that there were different rules for me than everyone else. I don't necessarily, and in fairness, I reached out to Sage Steele to let her know that I don't necessarily vibe with her assertion that there were different rules for her than everybody else. But I do not deny that she's very passionate about what she feels. She's not faking it. And she certainly had her examples to point to. And in fairness to her, I have to recognize that, you know, she feels the way that she felt. She was on Jay Cutler's podcast and she was talking about COVID. She was, you know, she's just very, very outspoken. She's a relatively conservative individual. Uh, her politics are conservative and what have you. She's passionate about it. And I don't necessarily fully agree with her politics. Here's what I will tell you about Sage Steele. She's a consummate professional. She cares about her performance. She is no slouch in front of the camera. She knows what she's doing. She's been a pro for decades. And there's a bigger subject to broach. And it's not about other people who are allowed to talk politics. Hell, I'm one of them. Okay? The reason why I tell her and I would say to her, I didn't necessarily feel like the rules were different for her than it was for anybody else. The rules are different depending on the circumstances and the situation, which are analyzed and dissected on a case-by-case -case basis by ESPN. I would know because it happens to me all the time. Certain issues are bigger than others. I say something about, you know, Stefan Diggs is different than if I, you know, it, it, different than what I had to say about Shoei Otani and the backlash that I received from Shoei, Shoei uh, about Shoei Otani um, caused a greater backlash. And the company is going to respond and react to that because when you have stockholders and shareholders, you have to be sensitive to all of those things. And to me, that's not foreign. You know, when Adrian Peterson was being looked into for corporal punishment, the Vikings and the NFL didn't immediately suspend him or put him on some commissioner's list. But when advertisers and sponsors threatened to pull their dollars, all of a sudden, their tune was changed. When Ray Rice got into trouble by putting his hands on his then fiance, and he was suspended for a couple of games, there was no uproar until the video came out. And all of a sudden, the backlash ended his football career. He put his hands on his fiance in that elevator in Atlantic City, and Ray Rice has never played an NFL game again in his life. Different circumstances call for different actions and reactions, also different roles. You're a pundit on ESPN's first take paid to give your opinions. That's entirely different than being the host of SportsCenter. And there's a different responsibility that comes along with that. But that doesn't mean that her argument is to be summarily dismissed. I'm just saying 
You can look at it from a different lens. But ultimately, here's the only reason I brought this subject up. It wasn't really to talk about Sage Steele other than to wish her nothing but the best. She knows I am a friend and I'm always here to help her in any way that I can because she's always been cool with me and I'm going to always be cool with her. And that's just the way it's going to be. But it wasn't just to bring her up. And it wasn't to bring up ESPN at all. It's to bring up black conservatives. Because you do have a lot of people out there that hate on folks just because you happen to be black. And your politics, at least in some people's eyes, in many people's eyes, may not identify with your community and what your community feels your politics should be. Sage still had a white mother and a black father. She told her story. Go look up Megyn Kelly's interview. It was a fabulous interview with her. And because of her positions, because, again, when you grow up in a household like that, there's a heightened level of sensitivity to all sides as opposed to just one. And because of that and what it made her into as a woman, as a person, as an intellectual, because she is not dumb, you have a lot of people who have come with at her with venom and vitriol. And you might have had some people in the workplace. Now, I'm here to tell you, there's a misnomer that ESPN is some liberal place. That is a lie. I know a bunch of conservatives that work at ESPN. I'm telling you what I know. But the reason why I bring that subject up is because I think at the end of the day, and I've said this publicly on several occasions, it's not applicable to just ESPN. It's to anybody. I think it's a mistake when a corporation tries to silence anybody. I think you let everybody speak. That way the company doesn't get blamed for the positions an individual takes. The individual has to be culpable for the words that we articulate and the impact that it has ultimately on us. If I say something and it ultimately costs ESPN dollars and as a result ESPN says you got to go, they're not saying I have to go because of my politics. They're saying I have to go because I compromise their bottom line. And I think that's the position all corporations should take as opposed to trying to curtail or silence anybody because you think their individual words are going to be a reflection on the whole. It is not when you let everybody speak. You just let everybody speak and you monitor the bottom line. And if they cost themselves or you, if they compromise your bottom line, they got to go. I understand that. And I think that ESPN has done a better job of understanding that, particularly as of late, along with various other businesses out there. And I think that Sage Steele is somebody that you're going to be hearing from in the very near future. I don't know if you'll like what you hear. I don't know if you will. But I suspect you'll listen. And that's really what it's all about. I wish her nothing but the best. And uh, like I said, I spoke to her recently. She knows that I'm rooting for her to be all right and to be successful. I think overall I've known her for over 20 years. And we've had some disagreements from time to time, some fiery disagreements from time to time, especially with our politics. But she's a good person. Heart's in the right place. She can be a bit fiery and all of that stuff. That's what makes her who she is. And I'm good with it.